warm welcome to our nine month earnings report from Basel. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Hardy. I'm CFO, CEO of the company and would like to run you through our today's earnings report. Before we do this, I would like to remind you on our disclaimer that the statements uh, we are making here are using information available to, uh, to the management at the time. Uh, these are forward-looking statements we are making by nature, subject to significant known and unknown risks and uncertainties. So neither the group nor the management board therefore can assume any liability for the statements made. Please carefully look at the disclaimer and let's start. So looking at the agenda for today, we start um, as usual with an executive summary putting um, the main messages on top. Uh, we then dig further into our financial situations and to the different um, uh, PNL cash flow uh, elements. Uh, we then have a quick glance at the share performance over the reporting period here and also the um, ownership structure. And this brings us then to point four, the outlook uh, we, are, we are making for this year and also for the midterm. And then I'm very sure we have uh, enough time after the presentation for a hopefully lively uh, Q&A session. Yeah, let's start with the executive summary and uh, the market situation, the market surrounding we are in. I mean, it's not, Pleasant market surrounding. We are experiencing the last nine months uh, that the markets continue to be weak in all regions. And that after Europe, who was relatively robust last year, uh, also cooled off a bit. Fortunately, not to the same extent what we have experienced in Asia and in the US, uh, uh, cooling off last year and then also uh, the level we see the business uh, in the, those regions. However, Europe also cooled off quite a bit. We have seen slight recovery in the first half year and we come later to this step-by-step -step improvement uh, of um, order entries and also uh, billings. Um, but unfortunately, we have experienced again a drop in market demand uh, in the third quarter. Uh, this has two sides of or two root, root causes. The one is a normal seasonality effect, but on the other end, we also saw a slowdown, and we will come to this later. We saw also a slowdown in, uh, in PMIs. Um, so over the summer season, the change, the mood even changed again. The inventory levels at our clients are reducing over time. This is good news. So the destocking effect that is muting our sales are fading out. We still have a certain uh, mute, muting effect. Um, we foresee that uh, latest by end of the year, this should be really cleared off. Um, the last survey we did with our clients indicated um, that they come to a normal uh, inventory levels. The industry itself, uh, when we look at one of the key indicators, we, we look at on a regular basis, the German vision components industry exporting worldwide. Um, billings year to date down by 15% and bookings uh, down by 6%. Um, I'm also sitting in the, in the board of the VDMA for the um, vision components industry or vision industry. Um, and we recently had to lower also the expectation amongst uh, within the VDMA uh, down to 10% uh, billings drop for this year. So how is our situation in this market? So if we compare nine months, first nine months uh, of this year compared to first nine months last year, bookings are up by 4%. So we are, um, better than the industry developing on the booking side and, and for the accumulated nine months. Uh, on the billing side, we are more or less uh, developing like the industry is developing with 13% uh, drop in sales. 
on the gross profit uh, margin, we are generally Im Im improving it. Uh, this is good news. Um, after having quite low uh, gross profit margins in the second half of last year, we are step by step improving. I also come to this, uh, we had also a recent uh, little drop, but this uh, needs certain explanation and I come to this on one of the later slides. On the pre-tax earnings side, um, accumulated for this year, so far minus 4.9 million euro. So definitely not a situation we want to be in. Uh, last year comparison minus 16. I mean, this was a big restructuring year. Uh, not a real good comparison. But what we are seeing is um, the aim that we had this for this year to, to be back in the profitable zone due to the slow markets um, has, has been a challenge for us. And especially with a weak Q3, we had to revise our guidance and our outlook. And I come to this also in, uh, in, at the end of the presentation. So due to the near-term market development, uh, we also decided to further take action in lowering our break-even point because the uncertainty for next year is still high and we really want to bring the company back to profitability as soon as possible. And therefore, we have decided to go into another smaller round of reduction of staff uh, in order to bring down the break-even point at least below 100 million euro. So where we are at the moment with the structure of the company, um, so if we compare uh, the number of FTEs um, last year at after or at the end of the third quarter to this year at the end of the third quarter, um, we have uh, we are down uh, to 870 FTEs at the moment compared at that time a year ago, roughly 1,040 FTEs. Also structural wise, I mean, we have reduced quite some staff. Uh, in general, the structure we have kept, um, you see that uh, we have um, uh, over proportionally reduced on the R&D side. Um, this is because before we started to reduce uh, the organization, we have built up quite a lot of R&D force in the belief that the markets will stay strong and that our top line will grow further. So uh, we are still having relatively sizable R&D quotas. So this year so far in the first nine months, we talk about uh, having invested 15.5% from sales into R&D. So it's by no means that we are not investing, um, but obviously uh, due to the top line, we had to reduce the amount of investments that we are able to do in order to uh, do product developments. There is also, and we announced this already, there will be some upcoming changes in the management board. Um, so due to the situation that, that we are facing, um, the supervisory board has decided um, uh, together with one of my colleagues, Alex Temer, that he will leave the company by end of the year. There's also the, the decision that I will take over the chief commercial officer responsibility of Alex uh, 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 and, uh, at that point in time. And in order to leave off uh, uh, my workload, we will get a new CFO on board January 1st, so I can hand over my CFO role uh, actually to her. Um, we will come up with more information shortly, also with the name of the new CFO, uh, and would like to ask you to be a bit patient, but there will be following news soon. Yeah, also on the product side, we continuously investing, as I said, um, with roughly 25% of our staff working in R&D and quite a large marketing group also um, defining products, um, launching products. We had recently a, uh, one of the biggest events worldwide. This is the Vision Show in Stuttgart. So many of our product launches were timed to this uh, event. One of the key highlights we showed was the 
Pylon AI functionality. So Pylon is our software development kit for those of you who don't know our product so well. And we now offer our clients also uh, not only the framework, not only classic algorithm, vision algorithms, we also start to offer our clients uh, an uh, artificial intelligence functionality where they teach, can teach in um, their images, uh, teach a network and uh, deploy the network and run the network. Next to the software innovations, we have, yeah, we have uh, also uh, announced and, and uh, launched many new products, a whole new line scan product family, uh, also on the area scan side, together with frame grabbers, high end area scan, and mainstream products, and a variety of um, accessory products, lenses, cables uh, that come with it. Um, we presented ourselves, and this brings me to the next slide on the Vision Show in Stuttgart again more as a solution provider or full range provider so no longer just a camera single camera company so uh, demonstrating that we can solve applications in various different markets and uh, therefore it was a good demonstration on our journey from a single component company acting mainly in factory automation step by step um, moving uh, uh, to a position where we are a full line provider acting in various different application fields and also not only selling single components but give our customers good guidance, reference designs to solve their applications. Yeah, this uh, first part brings me then to the financials and let's have a closer look. Um, how the financials developed. Looking first on the top line, bookings and billings. Um, and having here the, the last, let's say, seven quarters of development, um, you can see we came from a more bullish market uh, still. In, in, I mean, the, the, the real high time was in 2020, uh, but then also first half year of 2023 was still strong with above 50 or around 60 million sales per quarter. Then the, uh, as most of you know, the order entries dropped sharply further. The lowest point was Q3 last year with uh, 34 million roughly in, in um, bookings, 41.5 million in sales. And then uh, from that on, step by step, we increased the sales. And um, this main, the, the, this increase was mainly driven by destocking effects, uh, not so much by uh, end markets really picking up uh, and uh, our clients having a better, uh, let's say, um, uh, market demand. So this continued till Q2. And then, as I mentioned, um, the situation changed a bit. The orders, uh, the, the bookings and the billings dropped. Uh, we were more of the expectation making more or less sideways on Q3 beforehand, but we, uh, especially the September was a very weak month. Um, and this then realized, uh, we had to realize here, um, the order entry to be pretty low with 41 million and 43.7 million on the revenue side. So all in all over the first nine months, we realized 137, uh, 36.7 million euro in um, sales. We're looking at the different regions. Americas is still pretty weak with 16%, normally in the range of 20%. Also Asia, typically above 50% uh, is uh, still weak. And EMEA uh, with 36% in general, com in comparison, still relatively strong. But as mentioned earlier, also, uh, the European region has cooled off over the period of the first nine months. So looking at the um, gross profit and gross profit margins. So maybe first take a look at the gross profit margin. We were at a very low point uh, compared to history in the second half of last year due to various reasons. 
we already initiated mid of last year uh, a program to improve the gross profit margin. We're pretty successful with it. So brought it from uh, 38% back to 48%. Recently in the, four, in the third quarter, we had a, a small drop down to 46.5%. This is mainly due to the low revenue because our indirect costs on the material and production, we had lower economies of scales and this uh, ended up in a, in a uh, drop of, of the gross profit margin. In general, we are uh, structurally um, uh, looking forward to further improve the margin step by step uh, to get back to our um, uh, uh, target is 50% roughly uh, gross profit margin. But the combination, a little lower gross profit margin and low sales ended up on the, in the third quarter here with 20 million uh, in gross profit only uh, after being at around 24 million in, in the th second quarter. And uh, the result you can see on the next slide here, if we look at the earnings, uh, we were slightly profitable already in, in the second quarter, but we dropped back into the non-profit zone with minus 2.6 million uh, uh, pre-tax loss in the third quarter. So this is the situation at the moment. And if we sum it up for a nine month view, um, order entries, as mentioned earlier, um, up 4%, uh, 133.5, sales down by 13%, so in line with the industry, as mentioned, uh, 136.7 million euro, uh, gross profit in absolute terms, uh, 63.5 million, so down by 7%. So under proportional down compared to sales due to the higher gross profit margin of 3% points that you can see in the next slide. EBITDA positive 9 million in the first nine months, but earnings uh, before tax um, uh, here at 4.9 million loss, pre-tax loss for the first nine months. Having a look at the cash flow situation, this looks different than uh, on the earnings. Um, we are uh, the last uh, uh, quarter step by step, we have made improvements with regard to our operational cash flow here in dark blue. Um, one might have to mention here that, um, especially on the Q3, the high, let's say, um, uh, or the relatively high operational. Um, uh, cash flow comes uh, from the situation that the revenue dropped over the course of Q3. So it was a very weak September at our end. So the accounts receivables went down and therefore we had any, an effect here. Um, this needs to man be mentioned. Um, other than that, on the investing cash flow, uh, we are having our normal run rate roughly of 23 at uh, 2.3 million uh, investing cash flow per quarter. And on top of it came two extraordinary M&A investments. In the second quarter, uh, the, um, an M&A investment uh, in Roboception, a, a German a Munich-based um, 3D company acting in Robert Vision. And we also took over the remainder of Basel France shares from a M&A transaction that we had already striked three years ago um, or two and a half years ago. And uh, we took over the rest of the shares and have now 100% of the shares. And this also had an extraordinary impact on our investing cash flow. All in all, free cash flow positive the last two quarters and also in total for the first nine months. Yeah, looking at the cash flow statement uh, for for the first nine months, um, we started the period with 32.2 million euro cash account, cash flow from operations 12.8, so much stronger compared to last year. 
uh, cash flow from investments minus 11 uh, million euro or, or um, uh, 11 million euro investments. Um, so the free cash flow in total as a net sum out of it, 1.5, slightly positive. And cash flow from financing for this year, the first nine months, almost 10 million minus 10 million, significant portion of these uh, were paying back loans uh, and also finance lease for uh, the buildings. These are the main positions in the cash flow from financing. So we ended up the period with approximately 24 million euro in cash account. Yeah, I have a quick glance to the share performance. Uh, yeah, by far not pleasant. Uh, we know this. We are concentrating to, to fix the business and to go back into profitability and growth zone in order to, uh, to cure our problems here. The, um, yeah, the share price developments, we started the period with approximately 12 uh, euro per share and ended at nine. We are currently at around six. So after the announcements uh, and the prelim preliminary numbers that we released two weeks ago, um, the share price further dropped. From the shareholding structure, no big change. Family has majority shareholders, long-term interest in the company, also very committed even in these more difficult times. And on the other side, uh, there was uh, on the other investors that I mentioned here, no change compared to uh, the recent past. Yeah, let's come to the outlook and also certain explanations to it. So what are our assumptions for the remainder of the year? So actually, after we were hoping for, and we were not the only company, hoping for an improvement of the situation in the second half of the year, we now believe for the remainder of the year that there will be no substantial recovery kicking in. However, we see a sequential improvement in bookings. This is what we definitely believe. Uh, so even though we have seen bookings coming down from Q2 Q, uh, to Q3, uh, we don't believe this is going to continue this downward trend. We believe that bookings will pick up mainly due to seasonality effects. So not because of uh, that market substantially uh, will pick up um, in the remainder of the year. We also believe that uh, there will be still certain muted demand due to the excessive inventories at our clients. However, this is definitely fading out uh, the situation and we should see all already in Q4 uh, that this um, the level uh, of muting uh, will be less. Geopolitical uncertainties to continue and rise, I mean, we. I just have seen also um, a lot of, of, of news in that direction. Uh, we also, I mean, see the risk of the China markets, of the conflicts, of the, the trade conflicts uh, maybe rising. And we also see that the competitive intensity uh, in, in China, in the Asia Pacific market um, by the Chinese competitors will also continue. Reflecting on these assumptions and also reflecting on the situation that there is still quite some uncertainty for the outlook of next year. We uh, had or we were forced first of all to re uh, revise our guidance. Um, beforehand we had 190 to 200 million uh, guidance and sales. We reduced it to 178 up to 184 million euro. And due to additional measures to reduce our cost base, uh, we also see an impact, an additional impact on the earnings side, uh, so that the earnings before tax or the pre-tax loss that we expect will be in between 8 to 12 million. So quite substantial uh, loss again, we know this. However, we are very firm that we want to bring uh, across or, uh, or, or um, implement those measures, lowering the personnel costs uh, short term again, um, also uh, having ongoing tight OPEX and CAPEX management ongoing in order to um, 
to reach our target to bring the break even point uh, even below 180 million euro and be fully committed to bring back the company to the profitability zone as soon as possible. In the long run, um, midterm, we are not scared about our markets. We are firm and firmly believing that computer vision market will start to grow again. We simply don't know when yet. And there are a lot of mega trends in automation, uh, in digitization, in the uh, medical industry. So cost problems in medical, uh, uh, also AI possibilities. Um, these mega trends fuel the usage of computer vision and therefore we believe that uh, the markets will grow again in high single digit uh, realms uh, sooner or later. The strategy that we have taken from a single component uh, to a full line solutions provider, uh, we are also very convinced that this is the right way in order to uh, grow the pie that we address and also in order to differentiate better than you can with a single component. Therefore, we believe we can bring back the company to grow at a pace of 15% top line and also a sound earnings before tax margin of 12% and growing the company um, to a level at around 300 million by the end of 2027. However, what we need to get to these absolute numbers is a recovery of the market starting next year at the latest. And also what we need is a remaining access to the Chinese market because that's still quite a significant portion of our top line. Having this said, I'm done with the presentation today and I'm opening now the Q&A session.